everybody, this is George Marius and today I'll be breaking down my take over the song, if you will, uh, which was written by Jason Swidwell and uh, my approach has been largely improvisational. So what I'll be doing is taking a look at every section and talking a little bit about what I did uh, each time. All right, uh, let's go. So for the intro, we got a C going to an F to a B flat seven. So it's got this sort of little cool little groove going and for C and F, I'm sticking to playing really lyrical lines, especially in the beginning, in the very intro. I wanted to have a song-like quality, so using like triads and just really simple melodies. Uh, and then from the B flat seven comes the, the, the first time I'm playing um, an, an inversion of the B flat seven chord because I really want to bring out the A flat. Because I think it, it kind of sum, sums up the vibe of those three chords put together. Uh, the section does repeat uh, furthermore in the song, and I think uh, the second time I used also Lydian and Dominant, which you can play over, over that chord, so. And uh, the the outro, which pretty much wraps, wraps the, the song and is the same progression, well, for that one I had a more of a bluesy kind of approach. I almost treated it as if I was soloing over a C7. And a B flat seven. So, I mean, I used a blend of minor pentatonics and also I call it like chromatic mixolydian. Is a little bit like playing a mixolydian uh, with a minor third and, you know, generally sort of, um, I guess, country slash blues inspired sort of stuff. And the same for. Same for the for the B flat seven. Then for the verse, we've got A, E over G sharp, and C over G. Let's stay in that section for a little bit. So for A and E over G sharp, I'm really thinking at A major, and you can be aware of things like, of course, chord tones and stuff. And same for when we go to C over G, I'm switching to C major. So uh, you can connect those chords by by chord tones. For example. A major shares E with E over G sharp, so you can make a point of that in your phrasing. And E shares that chord tone with E major, right? So, so you can try and connect those uh, together uh, to make it sort of a little bit easier to phrase, I guess. And then we've got F sharp minor seven to B7 sus four to B7 over A. And that really is a departure from C and going to E as our key center. So I'm just really thinking of E major by just being, just being aware of my chord tone. And then we've got the next part, which is um, uh, E over G sharp, uh, F sharp minor seven, and E. And there, I'm just kind of really thinking it as, uh, I mean, the the, the the overpowering sound is E, so uh, I think I've played a little bit more sort of minor pentatonic -y kind of stuff. Uh, as well as may have played sort of some, a blend of uh, major and minor blues, you know. Because really it's, yeah, that sort of E being your overpowering sound. So you get you got a, a little bit more more freedom. You can even stay, you know, um, on E major for, for the most part in that in that section. And then we've got the pre-chords which starts with A. And again in the beginning of the song I'm keeping things a little bit simple, so I'm just focusing on playing sort of um, simple melodies in, in A major, but then I might also drift to some more bluesy stuff like uh, chromatic mix Lydian or you know, blending major and minor pentatonics. Um, and then we've got uh, the G dominant, G7, going to F sharp 7. And uh, I think the first the first time around, I'm just treating G7 uh, just as a just as a mixolydian, really. Uh, and I love that. I love that sound of the mixolydian, especially when it's G. You can use all the open strings. <laughs> I think uh, 
I'm, I'm also sort of again uh, playing more of the the blues. <laughs> For the F sharp seven, um, well, what, a device that I like to to, to use, um, especially if you want to sort of bring out tension, and you can do that with uh, dominant seven five chords. Um, you can go a minor third up and use the form for the minor pentatonic. In which case, it would be the A minor pentatonic, and I like to break down the the, the minor pentatonics and spread triads, so you get a really cool sound. <laughs> And I think that's what I did the first time around the song. Which sounds really cool. It's like, it's, there's a lot of... It's, there's a lot of tension. It's a little bit like Marmite. You either love it or hate it. But uh, it's certainly a really cool approach. Thing I also, I also used the whole tone scale. Which I like to break it down quarterly. Because I love, you know, texture. So instead of just playing uh, sort of... Uh, which I hate, uh, kind of played more like this. Which is still dissonant, but it has sort of, it's quite interesting sort of texture, you know. And then we've got the F6, the G7, and then I'm really just thinking sort of uh, C major, obviously I'm, I'm you know, um, when the chord changed, so is your perspective on the, what notes you're gonna outline and stuff, but I'm just, it's just so mostly natural notes going on there. And for the A sus4, uh, uh, going to the A7, uh, I'm just thinking sort of A mixed lead in with my throwing a, a few chromaticism there and some open strings, which I love. And then we'll get to the chorus, and if you're a guitar fan, which you are because you're watching this, you might uh, remember of the Satriani song, Flying in the Blue Dream. Got that sort of Lydian kind of vibe because we, again we got a D and then E over D, and when you play E over D, you got the G sharp sort of ringing right, which is the sharp four of D. So, and for that section again, I'm using D Lydian, um, and I'm using a lot of like open strings as well, uh, sort of open string kind of riffs. Uh, so keeping the D open and playing some lines on the G string because I like the sound of that. <laughs> Well, it's just playing, you know, just just playing the Lydian sound. And then we got the C sharp minor seven to F sharp minor seven, which to me is just like yeah, just thinking of the C sharp minor scale. And then we got a really dramatic change from the F sharp minor seven. To F, very sort of dark, and um, going to a G7, and again that is a return sort of going to C major. But again for for F, I really want to bring out my uh, my sharp four because it's it really sort of um, helps bring out the drama and. G7, uh, gosh, how did I play? Yeah, just played uh, really just C major. And then we got the middle section, which sounds a little bit like the shadows, kind of like a Western kind of feel to it. So we, we start with an A minor. And then we've got a quite a cl classic sort of movement. Uh, we've got A minor seven to A minor six. And we have the flat six going to an E7. And then going to a D minor. And then we've got a B minor 7 flat 5 to an E7. And we've got a build up on G major. And then A major. And for the majority of that section, I'm just using A minor. Pretty simple stuff, but of course, thinking of every chord. Uh, so it's always nice to try and bring out like that um, movement of the 7 to the 6 to the flat 6. Not sure I did that, but it's nice if you want to do that. <laughs> And bring out the chord tones for when D comes. And there for the 2-5, uh, I mean, I think it used the diminish, so you can use, of course, it's a, it's a 
symmetrical sort of um, sound. So uh, thinking of starting from F, for example, uh, if you go half step of your five, you, you can use that diminished, and you can slide it up in in um, in flat thirds. <laughs> And then we got uh, the G major to A, and uh, I think what I did there, um, I did like a sort of a, a micro band. Oh, sorry, here. And then moved that a whole step up just to follow the chord on the sixth of every chord. Doesn't sound particularly. Uh, <laughs> middle of the road, but that's what came out when I was improvising, and hey, so I kept that in. So for that particular take, I used my Reverend Buckshot, and it's a really great guitar if you want like sort of telly-like sounds. But also if you want to burn, it's got a really sort of, it's got a really good neck for it. Um, and as far as amp goes, I used my Helix, which is, which you can see over there with Will Ferrell, and um, I used a Fender amp and I used an Impulse Response by a JDC, which is, sounds really, really good. Right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and looking forward to seeing you soon in a future edition. Cheers.